So let's look at some code, uh, the bank account example, which will give us an idea of how getters and setters work and encapsulation. And so what I've done here is set up a, here's my main program, and it's simply calling, creating a bank account object at the moment. And if we look at the bank account class that we're creating that object from, what I've done is pretty simplistic, but I've set up a, in a bank account, you, uh, we have a, a field called balance, which is a double. Obviously that's keeping track of our account balance. And we've set it to private because we've decided that we don't want to have give anybody access to balance. In other words, we want to validate the balance before we actually um, change it. Let me kind of keep going on with that idea. And so we've decided that we need to give whoever is creating this bank account object the ability to see the balance. And because it's private, if I try to write private here, because it's private, I don't have access to this field outside of the class. In other words, if I type in account.balance, because it's private, I can't get the balance. So I've created a method, which we're calling a getter. And the idea behind this method is since I've made this, this balance field private, I have to somehow still give access to being able to retrieve that value. And so I've set up a method that is called getBalance, which will return the balance. So this is the only way that anybody, any user of my class will have access to the balance. So in other words, account um, get balance. Well, now I can certainly see the balance. And so I'll probably want to console log that if I wanted to. Um, so now I've given users the ability to get the balance, but I've taken away the ability for them to just randomly set the balance. So I can't have somebody say balance equals $4 million. I don't want them to obviously be able to just change that, which is why I've made my class private. You can't just go in and willy nilly change your balance as cool as that would be for whoever has that account. Wouldn't be so cool for the bank that owns that account. So now I've made it private, so you can't just change it whenever you want to, but because it's private, I have to give the user of the class the ability to see the balance. So how about setting the balance then? Well, I still, as a user of this class, might want to withdraw my, my money out of my account, and so I have to somehow still give the user of this class the ability to set the balance. But because I've made it private, I can now write a method that sets the balance based on criteria. In other words, if you, have, if you don't have the money in the account for the withdrawal you want to make, you can't make that withdrawal. And so now I'm controlling the balance via my class, which is why I made this private. You can't just change the balance whenever you want. You're going to have to be able to change your balance through this method that I'm creating. And because I'm creating a method, I have control over whether or not that balance is being changed or not. So I'm going to first check to make sure that you have that money in the account in order to make that balance, uh, to change that balance or to give you the money, in other words. Otherwise, you get this message that says no can do. So let's see these examples in play. Um, well, first of all, I can see that my first problem is going to be as, as the creator of this class is that I haven't really set up an initial balance, have I? I've just sort of said, well, if the, so if, if I try to send, for example, right now, if I try to create account.getBalance, or set balance, sorry, that it's available, but no matter what I put in here, whether I put $30 or $50, I don't have anything set for my balance. So this is still not quite, I can't quite use this yet. So that's when a constructor comes into play and I'll just go ahead and use that now. So I'm going to create a constructor that is, remember constructor is a method that gets run anytime an object is created and the constructor usually has the same name or does have the same name of the class. So I'm going to do a public constructor. It's going to be public. A constructor does not have a return value. So public bank account. And what I'm going to say is at the time of creation, when you create this object, I have to have an, a starting balance. So in order to create an account, you have to have a starting balance. And I'm going to say, just for clarity, starting balance. 
and so that every time a new object is created you have to send over a balance and I can then use the starting balance to set a balance for this account so I will say balance balance is equal to start balance okay so that's all well and good here so now you can't create a bank object without an initial balance so notice that I cannot because I have now written a constructor I no longer get to have a bank account or an object without sending some kind of data which is why I'm getting an error message the error message if you look at the gray box says there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter start balance okay and if you look at the line on top of that it says bank account bank account parenthesis double start balance so what that's telling us is that we cannot create a new bank account unless we send it that starting double which is what I've set up here so I've now restricted the ability you can't create an account unless you do a starting balance and let's say we have a starting balance of 500 I've now satisfied the fact that I've created a bank account object that must have a starting balance all right and so then the idea is that I back to this original thought now that I have a starting balance I cannot just change the balance to whatever I want because this is private so in order to change the balance I have to, I'm going to erase that, you can see that that's all red squiggly lines and not working. Instead, in order to change the balance, or in this case I'm thinking make a withdrawal, I have to run this set balance method, which is set balance, therefore going to check the withdrawal amount and make sure that it's valid, and if not, it's going to print out a no can do. So let's run this and see it actually happen. So let's run the set balance, and then when we're done, account and then get balance we'll print out our new balance uh, I guess I'm going to have to it's returning a value so I need to console log which is the wrong language system dot console dot right line and then whatever gets returned from get balance alright so let's see that work oh it's a method so I need to make sure it's in parentheses there we go alright so let's just debug this and run it so we can see it working so debug start debugging and I'll watch what happens here and so let's see so the first thing that happened was bank account our new object is created so let's walk through this and see what happens so let's see we can see that an account was created that there is a balance of 500 there's a little lock key so that says that this balance is not available just from the field name itself and so let's walk through this so now our account is created we can see we're stopped here and let's keep walking so now we see that we are in this particular line uh, withdrawal got sent fifty dollars or fifty and so now we'll walk through the code and watch the program work so if withdrawal is greater than balance balance is 500 withdrawal is 50 so I think that should be okay so I'll continue to walk through this oh I have my conditions backwards don't I <laughs> this is a great way to debug so this is a good example of why you want to debug my condition is backwards here withdrawal is not greater than balance withdrawal needs to be less than so I need to change this sign around in order to make this logically not an error but syntactically it's all working so it's going to print out no can do because my logic is wrong and then we'll continue on and I should see a we'll come back to console I'm just going to stop this and start again because I have to fix my problem here so let's fix our logic error and then we can see things happening again so this is why debugging is good practice to learn how to do walk through your code and see why things aren't working the way it was supposed to fantastic all right so I'm gonna put a stop here again and let's run this again so debug start debugging fantastic all right so the codes running the code has perfect has created my account object I can see my account object has a field of balance it has a five hundred dollar starting amount looks like it's a double so this line has executed we're stopped on this line so I'm going to walk through my code step into and I can see that withdrawal is here yes so this with the dollar amount was correctly sent to this method 
and I'll walk through now, if withdrawal, which is 50, is less than balance, that's true, so that should be a legitimate withdrawal. So the correct condition is running. Balance is gonna be minus equals the withdrawal, and so that should continue on. The else is going to skip. So we come back to uh, the, the program comes back to the line that calls that method, and now we should run account get balance and account get balance then is going to just return balance which has now been updated to 450 and then it should go to the console and we should run finish our program so where our console ended up but um, we are able to walk through the code and see that it is working correctly now so let's do something else let's take 50 and make it 600 so let's try to withdraw 600 and so now I'm just going to run it because we've seen how to debug and I need to put a read key or do a debug uh, run start without debugging so then I'll see this window and now I'm seeing no can do and you can see that that balance hasn't been updated and so hopefully in this video what you're starting to see is well one debugging is a good practice but you're starting to see why it's a good idea to set our fields to private and so that way we can in doing so control the access level or how this particular field can be manipulated or managed outside of our class in this case we made balance private in making it private we had control over the ability to see that field and or to update it in because it's private then we had to give our user access to being able to see the balance and so we had to set what was called a uh, or to create what was called a getter which is going to get that balance and send it back to the class that's calling it but we also got control oh sorry that's the wrong one that's this one that was our constructor we also got control over our balance so they couldn't just set the balance whenever they wanted to we had control we validated we were able to only change that balance within this class as we wanted to as a bank as, as the owner of this software as the bank I would want to make sure that I wasn't giving out money to uh, account users without control over making sure that they had those funds available so this is an example of private access it's also an exa example of encapsulation because we're writing software within this bank account class that is unavailable to the user of the class. So whoever's using this, calling our uh, bank account class, can't change the rules here within set balance. They simply are uh, clients. They only get to use our our method the way we intended it they don't get to change it so that's encapsulation this idea that this bank account is a closed box it's it's something that you can access but you don't get to change and in using it um, I get control over this this uh, balance and and uh, what you get to see and how you get to use it